So when you hear like when 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 Jay Z puts out that song on the Black album where he says he would like to be you, mm-hmm. you're sitting there thinking, well, I want I wanted to be you, man. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's that's a good. That's that's actually at very accurate. I was like, can we trade places for a second? I can, <laughs> I can maybe have your bank account for a day and I'll flip it. Yeah. Um, no, Jay Z. I mean, you know, all due respect to Jay Z. Jay Z is infinitely more rich than I am and infinitely more popular than I am. Um, but he, you know, he's referenced me in song. And, and if you listen to his new album, yeah, Jay, I've always been a fan of Jay-Z so much where I said, Jay-Z, we'll get the real Jay-Z when he doesn't have to worry about fourth quarter sales. When he's comfortable in his, and, and doesn't have to worry about whether or not people are going to buy the record when he's already rich, that's where we're going to get the real Jay-Z. And that's what we're getting now. He's rhyming about his relationships and his babies. And he's and he's sampling Nina Simone twice on this right. album. Yeah. You know, my biggest record is a Nina Simone sample Mm -hmm. you know uh, years ago jay-z said i you know i want to rap like quality in common i feel like now he's getting to yeah i mean it's a it's a super like i think some people were even taking it back with the new jay-z album because there aren't any real like bangers on it it's all Mm -hmm. and it's very conscious they're not songs you like sing along to really they're kind of like it's a more vulnerable him kind of yeah it's it's grown and um you know there was a couple of websites talking about jay-z made the first grown hip-hop album maybe the first grown hip-hop album for people who aren't familiar with hip-hop but that sort of erases a lot of the artists that were that jay-z himself has referenced as inspirations for what he did now he even put out a playlist last week when the album dropped of the artists he's been listening to to show you like listen i'm influenced by the artists like mm-hmm. there's there's artists out there that have been making that type of album but jay-z is is like so rich and famous that when he does it is like now everybody pays attention and he's just fucking brilliant at the craft too what's your relationship like with kanye now because like when kanye first came out you were on the first <laughs> album he was producing your songs mm-hmm. like he was shouting you out on other songs mm-hmm. like are you guys still well kanye kanye i i consider i to this day i consider kanye a, a great friend yeah um, I think he's an icon. He, he, I mean, he'll tell you himself he's an icon <laughs> and a genius, and I happen to agree. Um, you know, I think he's he's literally given me life. That's a that's a cliched phrase. Oh, this thing gave me life, and it's like Kanye literally gave me life. You know, in the studio, his energy on tour, he's produced some of my biggest records. Um, he's been instrumental to my career, not just to my career, but to artists like me, like Most Def. And Common and Lupe Fiasco and other artists that he's lended his ear and his sound to. Um, I don't. I'm not a Trump supporter at all, and I'm not a fan of of Trump, and um, I'm not a fan of 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 artists standing with Donald Trump. So when he when he when he stood with Donald Trump at least publicly, I was disappointed by that. And I don't have a relationship with Kanye. Kanye is like a super famous stratosphere. <laughs> out yeah. there like he's achieved a level of fame that I, I have no relationship with yeah so I don't it's not like I can get him on the phone at this point I could maybe two years ago but I can't right now but Kanye complained last year about not being able to get Jay-Z on the phone he complained publicly on stage right I remember right so when he complained publicly on stage about not being able to get Jay-Z <laughs> on the phone that made me feel like I could publicly say something to him you know right. and so I publicly said listen the Trump stuff I'm not I'm not I'm not with that. But beyond that, I mean, look, the man is an icon and he's a genius. And and, you know, I if I if I can't be honest with him about things that I disagree with him about, I can't really be a friend. Kanye said a lot of things that have upset people. Mm -hmm. And I was able to and and I haven't agreed with everything he said, but everything he said up to the Trump thing, I rode with him on like, "Eh, maybe I don't agree, but he has a right to say it. That's the one thing that I that I publicly was like, ah, I'm not, I'm not really feeling him on that. Could you get Jay Z on the phone? Um, it might take a month. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Z was on the remix for Get By, yeah. and so I, you know, I, I, I met Jay Z at a, the Roots did a Lincoln Center thing right as Get By was blowing up, and Jay Z was like my favorite rapper at the time, and I'm, I met him backstage, and there's, there's like footage, there's footage on the internet of the first time I met Jay Z. And me like fanboying out over Jay Z like it's like Jay Z meeting me and we're showing each other mutual respect and I'm super nervous and it's like ten years ago so my clothes are super big, you know, falling off of me and and then um I asked him to be on the song and we exchanged two way pager. Wow! Oh my you god! You <laughs> your, yeah, it was like a texting machine. <laughs> yeah, you had to line it up with the machine. Yeah, and we exchanged two ways, and um I hit him like for like three months, maybe four times to the point where I felt like I was being a bugaboo. <laughs> and I left it alone. And then one day in my email, one day he sent me a two-way page and said, I'm gonna eat what's your email? I'm gonna email you this this verse. And I looked at my email and the verse was it. We never had a conversation. He just sent me the wow. verse. And then I saw him at a party and I thanked him for the verse. I was like, I was like, was how much giving you the verse? Like I, I wrote like, this for you? Yeah, I was like, how much is that? 
how much he was like, I'm not going to charge you because you can't afford what I charge for verses. <laughs> wow. I've had saying. women say that to me. But other <laughs> <things>. <laughs> what is that? So does he charge? Who does he charge? He charges someone who he doesn't have the same level of mutual respect, I guess. I right. guess sometimes he, he just wanted to do it. He probably liked you and wanted right. to do something. with Now, you. he he said he told me, he said, if I charge you, that would be your whole budget. You know, and, and, he, and he was right. And so, but then the record came out and it, it was on the radio for like two weeks and Jay-Z was still signed at Def Jam at the time. Leo Cohen heard it and sent a cease and desist out. So they, they had to stop playing the record. Why? Because that's, at that time he was a Def Jam artist. So Leo Cohen's like, what is Jay-Z doing on this underground rap record? Like, nah, you, nah I'm not. Oh, I'm the, yeah. No. Yeah, so yeah, that's how the labels do. Like, so that's, I think stuff like that is that... why Jay-Z was like, I need to have my own. I need, right. to, I need to own Rockefeller. I need to have Rock Nation. I need to own Title. I need to be able to make my own decision. What was a young Kanye like to work with? The same as Kanye now. He I, was I the suppose. same. I, yeah, that, that's the, the beauty of Kanye is when I met him, like this is a real story. Like when you talk about speaking truth to power, and you talk about like, 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 like just controlling your fate, I watched this man create his own destiny. Like I watched him say... I am going to be known for wearing more polo than anyone. And I'm going to have this the bear as my album cover. My first album is College Dropout. My second album is Late Registration. The third one's going to be called Graduation. He said all of this before he had a record deal. You know, he was like, he played me Jesus Walks. He played me um, Hey Mama. He played me all these records. And I'm like, yo, this album, this record is great. He's like, nah, I'm going to get a deal. I'm going to put this this song on my second album. It's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, he had it all mapped out. Yeah, he knew what he wanted to do. He knew yeah. exactly. And that was inspirational to me. Because, like, I was I was famous before Kanye, before 50 Cent. And I remember 2004, they both came out, and they were both huge, and they were competing. They had the records against each other. And these were both artists who were referencing me. And I was like, okay, seeing how they planned their shit out, it just made me work a lot harder and sort of reinvigorated my career. I was close. I wasn't as close to 50 at all, but I was close to Kanye. Um, and seeing them, seeing how, how they, they planned it out really made me say, okay, I got to revisit what I'm doing. Yeah.